On a workforce basis, we have a real demographic challenge. So looking at this from an occupational point of view uh, reveals that we are um, not well positioned competitively if we want to grow the economy as a whole because the areas that are in demand, the, the areas that are growing or we are undersupplied in, the areas that we are well positioned in in, the, in terms of the supply and, and, and um, uh, number of people um, are in demand, but they are uh, um, also not necessarily the highest paying jobs. And anything under one is uh, an occupation which Maine is less specialized than the U.S. Um, what it shows is that uh, if you look at our occupations, what are our specialized occupations? Number one is community and social service workers. After that, health um, uh, healthcare support workers, management. Uh, why management? Um, it has a lot to do with the small business issue, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, healthcare practitioners and technical, construction and extraction, farming, fishing, and, tr and forestry. Um, buildings, grounds, and maintenance, and education and training. What, what are we not specialized in? The least specialized, the, the farthest away, is computer and mathematical oc occupations. Um, business and financial operations. <coughs> legal. I'm not sure. Legal may be a good argument or a bad argument. Uh, architecture and engineering. Arts, design, entertainment. Transportation and materials moving. Production. Uh, administrative and office support. Personal care and other services. So we tend to be specialized in social services, natural resources, construction, and health care. Not surprising given the fact that the largest industry in Maine is health care and social services. That's the largest <laughs> industry by employment today. So it's not surprising that our occupations tend to be more specialized in that area. But we're also less specialized in a lot of, of, of important areas. If we look at the areas that we are specialized in, and we look at the average wage in Maine versus the U.S., again with the ratio of one being we pay more than the U.S. Um, uh, on average. Um, management, legal, there aren't a lot of them, but we do pay them well. Um, healthcare practitioners and technical, architecture and engineering, computer and mathematical, life and physical and social sciences, business and financial operations. In other words, those occupations which are in shortest supply in the main economy are also among the best paying occupations in the main economy. Um, and there's a relationship there, of course, because, and it's exactly the relationship I talked about a minute ago, which is if we have occupations in short supply, we tend to pull those in with higher wages. If we look at, if we look at Maine versus the U.S. in this slide, uh, Maine's occupational wages are at or below the U.S. except in natural resources. So while our, our highest competitive, our, in this slide, boy, those, and you never get the colors right. <laughs> the, 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 the projectors are, every, every projector is different. Um, so the, if, you look at, if you look at within the Maine economy, our high paying jobs are in the shortest supply, but throughout Maine, of course, we do not pay um, nearly as much as the U.S., and this is one of our long-term problems, which is relatively low income and relatively uh, low pay. Uh, our, the only occupation in which uh, Maine uh, pays substantially more than the U.S. is farming, fishing, and forestry. And I know for those of you who are in the farming business may find this surprising, but um, uh, that's, I think most of this is driven by the people in the forest products business rather than on the farming and the fishing side. Um, uh, ma our manufacturing workers make a little bit more on average than the U.S., um, as do food preparation and service-related workers. Almost everybody else in this list makes less than the U.S. So, the occupational distribution of Maine's economy um, tends to uh, be specialized in the relatively lower-paying jobs and the relatively higher-paying jobs are among the the, um, the, the areas in which we are not specialized. So how does this relate to our education system? Um, Maine's educational attainment relative to the U.S. based on 2011 American Community Survey data is not as weak as often uh, portrayed. Uh, in fact, we're about the same in terms of the percentage of our population holding a bachelor's degree. We're a little ahead in terms of associate's degrees. Um, 
the where we where we differ from the US is at the top end of the scale where we have fewer people with graduate degrees and more people with just a high school degree um, and so what you see here but the but the but the big difference and this is true in both the US and in Maine is in the some college area if you if you look at the what, what this suggests is that there is some room to grow the number of people who are going on from high school to college because there is a difference here with people who basically stop at high school. There is room to improve in that. But if you want to look at to get, get getting to degrees, there are more people in Maine with some college than have bachelor's degrees alone. Now if you take bachelor's and graduate degrees together, we still have more people with college degrees than some college. But there are more people in Maine, 19% of the, of the population, 25 and older, this is population 25 and older, more people in Maine have some college than have just a bachelor's degree. So there's a, there's a big pool of people out there. If you really want to push ahead in terms of educational attainment, that big pool of some college is uh, right for the picking because they have already gotten into college, they've already gotten some college experience, and for one reason or another, life, finances, jobs, they've had to move, they've, they've dropped out. This becomes more sharply apparent when you look at, uh, if, you, if, you, if you break down our three urban areas, uh, Lewis and Auburn, Bangor, and Portland, um, there are some important differences among them. We don't, we don't have this data yet for 2011 below the metro area level. Um, but the, um, uh, for example, uh, the, the proportion of people with a high school degree only is much higher in Lewiston Auburn uh, than it is in Portland. Um, on the, uh, at the same time, the number of people with a bachelor's degree or graduate degree is higher in Portland than in um, any other area, and only Portland competes with the Boston area, our nearest uh, major metro area f for competition for jobs and educational attainment. Um, obviously, we are way behind the Boston area on, on graduate degrees. Only the Portland area competes on bachelor's degrees. Um, we're about the same on associate's degrees, with Bangor actually having the largest proportion of its workforce uh, with, that, with uh, uh, associate's degrees. Um, about and the sum college group is reasonably distributed evenly across all three main areas, but is again substantially higher than the Boston metro area. Boston metro area has a substantially portion, a uh, smaller portion, having just sum college. And of course, that's logical given the number of places you can go to college in Boston. You can practically trip over any street in Boston and find a college. Uh, let me turn now to the discussion of the. Uh, uh, second of your agenda items, which is um, downtown development. 90% um, of the population growth from 2000 to 10, 2010 took place in Maine's urban areas. Uh, only 10% of the population growth took place outside of a metro area, a micropolitan area, or a service center. Um, the vast majority, 75% of Maine's population growth occurred within its three metropolitan areas. 10% um, in the micropolitan regions, Sanford, uh, Rockland. Um, in the service centers, um, uh, Greenville, Dover, Foxcroft, Ellsworth, in more rural counties, uh, a, a significant shift occurred. Those, pop, those uh, communities lost population in the 1990s, but gained population in the 2000s. Um, and in the rest of Maine, um, the slowdown was significant from the 1990s to the 2000s. Moreover, a huge shift has occurred in the U.S. and it has been reflected in Maine. Um, in Maine, uh, in, the, in the three metropolitan regions, the core urban areas, Portland, South Portland, Westbrook, Biddeford, Saco, Bangor, Brewer, and Lewiston, Auburn, all gained population during this last decade. After 40 years of losing pop or stable population, all of the core regions of the three metropolitan areas gained population. People are coming back into the cities. Um, it is true that most of the growth occurred outside of the uh, core metro areas. It's still a suburban dominated growth pattern, but in all areas, suburban growth slowed and core or central city growth 
accelerated in this last decade. Um, this was perhaps, uh, this was notable in Bangor, in Portland, in Biddeford, Saco, and least in, in Lewiston, uh, Auburn. Um, in Lewiston, Auburn, actually, Auburn slightly a few hundred people declined. All of that growth in the core in Lewiston was, Lewiston, Auburn was in fact in Lewiston. Um, so there is a, uh, there is a decided movement here um, back towards the cities that I think is just beginning. It reflects a lot of things, including uh, a lot of redevelopment work in our cities, a lot of opportunity, a lot of effort to make them more livable, um, and an aging population which is having shed itself of the kids and the four acre lot with the basketball court and the three car garage is moving back towards the cities where the suburb, where the, uh, where the, the um, uh, uh, amenities are. I mean, this is my own story. I, I came to Maine, lived in Gardner for a couple of years, built a house and sprawled out on two and a half acres in Reed Field for 20 years. And when I moved back to the Portland, I came, moved right into the middle of South Portland. Um, so I've been a re-urbanizer along with a lot of other people, and I don't know whether they followed me or I followed them, uh, but this is clearly a trend. It's also a trend, as I mentioned, in our rural areas. These are the, these are the service center areas, some of the service center areas we looked at, from, um, uh, and, it, and it shows the decline in the number of people, about 2,000 in the 1990s, and a gain of about 3,000 over the last decade. It's still true that even that, that we are still sprawling out across the landscape, but this is an important shift that has a, uh, is occurring, and, and it's really important for your thinking about downtowns because downtowns um, or urban cores are places of, of where people ought to live and work. I mean, that's the thing that defines a downtown area. It's not just a geography. It's a functional definition about where people can live and work in close proximity to one another. And, and, and so as, we, be, as we, we have begun to move back downtown, we've begun to get more of that mixed use and closer um, proximity to, uh, between jobs and um, uh, between jobs and our, our living conditions. Now there's another set of changes that the, 19, uh, the 2010 census shows that are also important here. Um, household structures in Maine are hugely changing. Uh, more female-headed households, there's significant growth in non-families and people living alone. In fact, the, by far the largest growth in the population and household types over the last 10 years has been in non-family households, people who aren't related or by marriage or blood living together, and in single-person uh, households. The non-family households and the single uh, and the living alone tend to be dominated by males, where the females, women-headed households, uh, tend to be uh, increasingly um, the the head of households for families. So you have a lot of single women uh, living with their children uh, as a as a large growth group, um, and then men, some of them living together, some of them. Um, in um, unrelate with unrelated uh, people, um, and, and a very large group in the in the increase in the number of men living alone. This changes the demography of housing demand. Housing demand is no longer uh, the simply explained by the kind of traditional uh, young people living alone, working for an apartment, getting married, going out and living in a family situation for a number of years. The kids move out and you move into retirement. Uh, increasingly throughout the life cycle, people are living alone uh, or in non-family households. And this changes the, the dynamic because they simply don't need as big a piece of housing as families do. They can, they can work and live in smaller, um, smaller spaces in condos and apartments. And apartments in particular are uh, often needed here and, and apartments are a big issue because in most of Maine, multifamily housing is almost illegal. Um, so one of, the, one of the big issues here is going to be about, as our demography changes and as our population shifts, uh, where do we find the multifamily housing that is going to accommodate a world that's very different than the baby boom generation coming along over the last 50 years. Um, another big issue here is 
uh, affordability. Affordability in Maine, uh, it, it, we've, we've all heard about the crisis in the housing industry, and in fact, the median home price in Maine has fallen from about 190,000 in 2007 to about 160, uh, the bottom was out at about 157,000, it's since, since come back up to about 170,000. We've assumed that that was a big improvement in affordability. Unfortunately, uh, during all this period, uh, average household incomes have fallen even as, and they have fallen even as the, the prices have increased. There is no county in Maine that does not have an affordability issue when you define that as the relationship between the median household income and the median home price. It's gotten worse everywhere, mostly because median incomes have fallen even more so than median home prices. So all of Maine has a, an affordability issue um, that needs serious attention, particularly if incomes are going to continue to be very, very slow growing. And we see this shift towards more and more people living alone. One of the big reasons why people can afford houses over the last 40 years or so is because people formed into families, they got married, they pooled resources, and that gave them enough to have, an inc have a, the income and the down payment for a house. Increasingly, people are not going to have that, and so affordability is going to be a, an even bigger issue, I think, given the demographic structure than it's been in the past. Finally, um, I want to talk just very briefly about what I, what I, I think is, a, is an important opportunity for Maine. Uh, this map, um, it's a little hard to see, but this is the, uh, uh, what you see here is the Portland area. Uh, you can see the towns up there. The towns in green or multicolor are, ta are transportation analysis zones. This is part of an urban modeling project that we're doing. <coughs> Uh, at USM right now, and we're, this is part of our analysis for the transportation system in the Portland area. And what you see here, every, every zone within the towns where it's white has more population than jobs. Every one where you see color and the depth of the color matters um, has more jobs than population. Remember I said that downtowns are where jobs and population mix. I think there's a huge opportunity coming over the next 20 years to remix population and, and employment, not just in the older downtowns where we initially mixed it, but in the newer downtowns where we have lots of, where we have retail space becoming available, where we're going to need to put an aging population closer to the retail and services that they need to be. So I think this is, uh, this is an area where in the national literature on planning, um, this is considered to be one of the most interesting and innovative areas for planning uh, in, in the U.S., particularly since the, the age of the big box store is now pretty much over. We've, we've built them all. We're not going to build any more Walmart. We might build one more Walmart. They might, Walmart, you can never tell. But we're not going to build any more uh, Lowe's. We're closing those. We're closing Home Depots. We're closing those big boxes. What are we going to do with them? Are we simply going to throw more? Um, people back into and wait for them to come back as retail space or we can can we find ways to repurpose places like the main mall into a more mixed-use zone uh, I think this is one of our interesting areas finally just a couple of things on small business um, this is the chart that shows that Maine is a small business state 97 percent of Maine establishments in Maine are below 50 employees but large establishments, over 50 employees, account for 47% of private sector employment. So while we are a state dominated by small businesses, the big, big guys still matter because they account for almost half the employment. And if you look at the employment, uh, you can see that while if we look at the distribution of, um, uh, if we look at the distribution of establishments here, um, the do small guys dominate, but if you look at the distribution of employment, you see that it's much more evenly distributed across all employment size, from less than five to over a thousand. Um, now, here's the point I want to basically make here. Maine is actually not doing a bad job adding small firms. This is the change in firms from 2002 to 2012, and yes, there's a recession in there which mucks up the statistics. 
But Maine has actually done not badly in terms of new establishments and employment in uh, companies of less than, certainly less than 20. We're actually pretty good at doing that. Um, where we have a problem in Maine is the number of companies with 50, or and particularly over 100 employees. We've lost both establishments and uh, employment in companies over 100. And we actually have very few companies in Maine that really do grow from under 20 to over 100. In a study we did for the Maine Technology Institute four years ago, uh, we found a lot of really bright, very good small technology companies. And when we asked them about their future plans, most said, well, I don't plan to grow very much. I like it the way it is now. I got my kids. I can get my kids in school. We don't have a lot of small companies that want to grow into big companies. And that's a much bigger problem for us than simply starting comp small companies. And it matters because in the U.S. as a whole, uh, has, we have a much higher proportion of our employment in establishments less than 50, but we trail the U.S. in companies with over 50 employees by a lot. Once you get, again, the line here is a little screwy, but that's okay. The line here, uh, once you get below, uh, over above uh, 50, we, are much, we have a much smaller proportion of both our employment and our establishments than the U.S. as a whole, which means we're really not getting to the place where the U.S. economy is. We're still dominated by those 20-person and under firms. I think we do well starting new businesses. I think our problem is growing small businesses into medium-sized and big businesses. So a couple of quick takeaways. Uh, Maine has a severe worker availability problem uh, on the immediate horizon, and it will be with us for the next 20 years. Um, uh, Maine is uh, weak in, uh, in, in high-paying occupations requiring advanced education, and the Sun College category represents our major opportunity for increasing educational attainment. Maine's urban areas are growing, but may need, may need to change significantly to accommodate an aging population. Um, and finally, Maine does not have a small business problem. It has a medium and bigger sized business problem. Uh, a, a, small business, a, a problem of small businesses becoming medium sized and big businesses. 